Signature Feud, a daily program that delves into the latest and most significant economic stories. From stock markets to currency news, Business Review covers the most up-to-date stories in the global financial world. The Secretary General of the Communist Party of China, the Central Committee, Xi Jinping, chaired a leadership meeting on the regular COVID-19 epidemic prevention and control measures. The meeting of the Political Bureau of the CPC Central Committee also studied the current economic situation and made arrangements for economic work. The meeting came days after Xi presided over a meeting of the Standing Committee of the Political Bureau of the CPC on Friday. The meeting pointed out that while the positive momentum in China's epidemic response is being consolidated, the task remains formidable, requiring control measures on a regular basis and strengthened efforts to guard against both imported infections and domestic rebounds. The meeting stressed continuous epidemic response measures in hard-hit Hubei province and its capital city of Wuhan, including extensive acid testing among key population groups and those who volunteer to get tested. The epidemic prevention and control work in Beijing should be further strengthened while targeted measures should be taken across the country to guard against rebounds. China's economy has demonstrated great resilience, he said, adding that the work and production are gradually getting back to normal levels with the rapid development of many new industries and businesses amid the epidemic. The meeting underlined upholding the underlying principle of pursuing progress while ensuring stability. Efforts must be made to ensure the epidemic will not rebound while steadying the economic fundamentals and securing people's basic livelihood. In this regard, he said the country will have to take the initiative to advance work resumption on all fronts with regular COVID-19 epidemic prevention and control measures in place and fight the epidemic persistently in a bid to bring the economic and social activities completely back to normal. The meeting noted China will use stronger macro policies to cushion the epidemic fallout. It called for more proactive fiscal measures such as issuing special government bonds to support the virus fight and increase the issuance of local government bonds as well as raising the utilization efficiency of capital to stabilize the economy. Shares of Gilead Sciences Incorporated rose 8% on April 17th after a report that patients with COVID-19 treated with the company's experimental drug in a clinical trial showed rapid recovery in favor of respiratory symptoms. There are currently no approved treatments or vaccines for the novel coronavirus, which has infected 2.18 million globally. And the drug is one of the treatments that has captured investment attention. But analysts at the company urged caution on drawing conclusions from the report by medical news website Stad that also helped for the broader markets. Gilead said the totality of the data from the trial needed to be analysed and expects to report results from a study in severe COVID-19 patients at the end of the month, data from other trials in May. The report said the University of Chicago Medicine Hospital was seeing rapid recoveries in fever and respiratory symptoms in patients with severe COVID-19 in a trial of the drug it was participating in. The company also raised the trial enrollment of patients with severe coronavirus to 6,000 from 2,400, which Pfeiffer Sandler analysts said was in order to increase access to the drug. Gleed's shares, which have risen 17.8% this year, were up nearly 8.1% at $82.71, while the Wall Street rose, also boosted by U.S. President Donald Trump's new guidelines to reopen the economy and Boeing's plans to resume production. The benchmark S&P 500 index has fallen nearly 12% this year. Chile's export-driven economy, once the envy of Latin America, will see a painfully slow recovery after being battered by the one-two punch of mass protests in late 2019 and the slow-moving coronavirus crisis. 
According to customs data released in early April, the Andean nation among the regions most dependent on mining and agricultural exports saw the value of shipments abroad plummet by nearly 9% in the first quarter alone. The sharp drop in exports and rising unemployment follow months of protests over economic and social inequality that left behind billions in losses to businesses and destroyed public infrastructure across the country. While Chile's all-important mining sector has escaped the worst of both the protests and the coronavirus so far, the value of top export fruits, vegetables, salmon and forest products plunged in the first quarter. Serious services and tourism have also tumbled, according to customs data. The University of Santiago economist Herman Frigolet said that Chile is an exporting country, therefore its export volume is being unaffected. The incremental is being quite moderate, practically nil. And we have terms of trade that are negative, unfavorable for Chile and many of its relevant products in the export basket. The country has confirmed more than 8,000 cases of coronavirus since the outbreak hit six weeks ago, among the highest tallies in Latin America. Chile closed its borders early in March, and large parts of the capital Santiago of 6 million people have been locked to, down to halt the spread of the virus. Malls, schools, movie theaters, and most non-essential services have been shuttered. Chile's central bank, which has already had an outlook for tepid growth of 05 to 1.5% in 2020, slashed its forecast. It is now calling for the economy to contract from 1.5 to 2.5% in 2020. Though the central bank policymakers predict a slow recovery by the third quarter, economic analysts in a recent bank poll predicted a contraction of 4.9% in the second quarter, making a rebound as early as the third quarter less likely. In usual circumstances, a queue of people waiting for free food handouts from a local charity in the Sicilian port city of Catania would be made up of the homeless and poorest of the community. But as Italy reaches almost its seventh week of lockdown, more and more people are struggling to cope without their normal incomes. In Sicily, one of Italy's poorest regions, concerns have been raised over the plight of the needy. On April 17th, a long line of people queued outside of Catania headquarters of Catholic charity Caritas, where hot meals of pasta, sandwiches and even basic items like milk were being handed out to locals who have been unable to afford food. The charity is now serving around 250 meals a day of lunchtime, seven days a week. They have increased their services to try and keep up with an increasing demand. Italy has suffered the deadliest coronavirus outbreak and has about 3.7 million people working in the black economy. Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte has told those who are struggling to provide for their families that the state would help. He promised a 4.3 billion euro fund for mayors and released another 400 million euros for food coupons for people who don't have the money to do their own shopping. At this time of year, Miguel Angel Revilla is usually swamped with work selling his prized sheep to markets throughout Spain for a cherished dish of roasted, unweaned lamb popular at Easter and other times of celebration. But as with many businesses in a globalized economy, the coronavirus has found a way to seep into his tiny community of barely 100 people, Bercial, in the rural northern Spain, where the sweeping flat farmlands are a haven for rearing sheep. Revia, who farms more than 1,800 animals with up to 500 lambs born each lambing cycle, said that everything has stopped, causing losses of 30% to 40%. Normally, he sells meat to distributors who sell it on to butchers or directly to restaurants and other buyers. Over the Easter period, Cordelo Lechal, which involves slow roasting meat from lambs younger than 35 days old that were only ever fed their mother's milk, is among the most popular regional delicacies. But while at the beginning of Spain's six-week-long lockdown some meat was still selling, the market has now completely dried up. Revilla says the distributors can't come and the butchers and restaurants are closed. 
Farming has always been an industry of tight margins and sheep farming in this region of northern Spain has been tough times in the past, but Revia worries that the current crisis may be too much to handle. Business Review, your daily source for the most critical stories in the financial world. Tune in next time for the latest financial news impacting the world economy.